Oh hell yeah, said 47HR45 just subscribed. Roma Daily Unimal is raining with their teeny monster crew. Beware or be scared. Watch out for the headlock. We have friendship cuddles. Roma Didi you woo. <laughs> what is happening right now? Oh my goodness. Hello, Rears. Dominus, thank oh, you hell so yeah. much for the song. Roll Marianne just subscribed. Anonymous, thank you for gifting. Subs. How many? What? <laughs> oh hell yeah. Cassidy you just on subscribed. Yet. I literally have the lights on in the room. <laughs> Oh hell yeah, Dave underscore Randolph underscore Art just subscribed. I love the way it reads out the underscores. Okay, so first of all, Zathras, thank you very much for the resub, much appreciated. I just flung my water cup across the room, but that's okay, because there was no water in it yet, because I hadn't done that yet, because I was just about to start the stream. Hello, Anonymous, thank you so very much for gifting subs to Roll, and to Kaza, and to Dave, thank you so much indeed. <sighs> and hello to everyone who is already here. <laughs> hello, 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 Roll. Thank you so very much for the raid. Much appreciated. Let me get a shout out to you. To I don't even have chat bot running yet. Hold up. Uh, let me get a shout out to you in chat as best as I can. Yes, I would like chat bot to run, please. Um, how was your stream? What did you get up to today? It is lovely to see you. Welcome, welcome. If you're not following Roll, go give them a follow. Do it now. Go do. Anyways. <laughs> Hello, Roll. It's lovely to see you. Welcome on in. Uh, everyone who has subs now, please enjoy the emotes and stuff. And hello to Dave, and hello to Casa, and hello to Roll, and Zathras. Hello, friends. Everything's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna have to put on the technical difficulty screen for a second while I put the lights on in the room, because I literally hadn't had a chance to put lights on, so uh, let me just illuminate things a little bit better. Um... <laughs> And then we shall begin in earnest. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. Uh, hope y'all are having a wonderful Thursday. It is lovely to see you. Roll, how was your stream? What did you get up to today? Roll, this really cool stuff if you're not familiar with them. Uh, you should go check them out. They do, they do like super interesting like makeup and cosplays and artworks and just all kinds of, all kinds of really rad stuff and you should, you should give them lots of love. Oh, <laughs> Roll says, uh, sorry we rushed you. Oh, no worries at all. I really do appreciate it. I love seeing you and your wonderful people. It's lovely to have you all here. Uh, and my tea is herbal, so it can sit for a couple of minutes in the kitchen, which is on the other side of the house. <laughs> but that's fine. Uh, anyways. <laughs> but yeah, hope you had a good one. Uh, stream was great. We studied drawing round male body shapes. Ooh, that is a good shape. That is a wonderful shape. I love that. That's awesome. If there's, as always, if there's anything you want to share, whether it's like, um, whether it's something on your Instagram or something you were working on on stream, you can feel free to whisper me a link. Otherwise, I'm very happy to go creep on your Instagram as well. It's entirely up to you. Or if you don't want to do any of that, that's all right too. We're just like, we're just very happy to have you here. Anyways, phew. Okay. Anywho. I have had quite a day today, I gotta say. Uh, how is everyone else doing? I'm doing, uh, you know, that, okay, that, that sounds ominous, but it's not. I've had a fine day, um, but it's been, it's been a little bit weird in as much as, do you ever just wake up and, like, parts of your body are really sore? Also, this is, this is just a little portrait I'm working on, um, so I brought it with me. Just in case we finish the painting we started, you know, like, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, um, we're, we're not gonna, it's fine. Um. But, uh, but yeah, just a little friend for the, the little guys I'm working on as some, some representative little guy portraits to, to, I don't know, try and incentivize people to give me <laughs> money for original paintings. Uh, this is one I finished. Um, I'm doing, I'm doing, uh, coordinating portraits of the two gnome husbands because they love each other very much. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Anyways, I'm doing just one of this little, like, skeleton lady because I think she's cute. Anywho, uh, but that's not what we're working on today because, uh, I don't know, I have an attention deficit and I can't just work on a thing at a time. Are you kidding me? That's, that's too, that's not enough things. Uh, but this is, this is not what we're painting today. It's a bookshop. Um, which also includes some little guys. If you, if you look real closely here, you can see there's a couple little guys at the back of the bookshelves there just... Just chilling, having a nice time. This painting is taking forever, uh, but that's okay. <laughs> um, 
Ooh, yes. Okay, so let me, let me, let me get Roll's Instagram up. There we go. Okay. Okay, it's, it's, it's incoming. It's incoming. Um, here's, here's the link you do. And here's another shout out as well. Because I can do that. Hopefully that works. Yay! Okay, anyways. Um, but, uh, yeah, also, um, <laughs> The, oh, geez, thank you so much for the hype train, y'all. That is a very lovely of you. Um, level two, oh my goodness, you absolute sweet peas. Look, I got a little emote. It's so cute, look at it. Bless. Anywho, um, Zafu says, was in roll stream since waking up. Day's going great so far. That sounds like a wonderful start to fly. No! <laughs> Hello? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, no, it's Lino just subscribed. Oi, oi, Savaloys. Okay, I love the way she says that. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for the sunlight and welcome on in. Hello, hello. Oh, hell yeah. Dan and Milo just subscribed. Hello <laughs> to my favorite preserve loving streamer, Jamie Kelsch, so my two crack bandicoot. I do love jam. How did you know? Also, um, yeah, for, it's, it's given me like three, like three different emotes, which. I don't know. They're just, like, they're just like spamming them at me now, which I do appreciate. And I do appreciate the, the thank you for the subs, y'all. And welcome in. Uh, hello, Lino. Hello, Dan. Hope you're having good Thursdays. It's lovely to see both. How are you doing? Um, <laughs> Theo, thank you for the kind words. I hope you're having a lovely Thursday as well. Oh, goodness gracious. Right. This, oh, that's what I was going to do. Right. Okay. So we had a raid from Roll. We've got some, we had some shout outs in the chat. If you're not following them, you should go do that. And we've got my Instagram because I, it's it's set to look at my Instagram first so that it doesn't actually accidentally go to a window that's got like weird streamy back end stuff that that I don't um, that you don't need to that you don't need to worry about. Anyways, here's an artwork that I did. Um, we're gonna we're gonna skip over that real quick because I don't know whether or not I'm allowed to show you some guys at the beach as per TOS, but. Um, but Roll does super rad with- oh my goodness, look at Gallo to these looks. I love this look so much. I love this look so much. It is- this is like- this to me is giving such like sp like springtime woodland just mischievous little friend vibes. That is absolute- absolute little guy energy. This is- this is somebody- like the little- look at the little- the little- the little sparkly flowers. This is so cool. Anyways. Um, and also, very, very nice princess cosplay here. Very, very nice. I love- this look is so iconic, and you've done it so well here. It is absolutely fantastic. Anyways, as I say, if you're not following Roll, and you like cosplay stuff, and you like interesting makeup stuff, and you like crafty stuff, and artsy stuff, and just fun times with a very cool person, go give him a follow. Uh, and thank you so much for sharing with us today as well, you wonderful, fantastic, amazing human being. Thank you, thank you. Huh. As for me, this is what I'm painting today. Uh, I should probably introduce myself for anyone who came in on the raid if you're still here. Hello, my name's Twitch user Sammy Kells from a variety streamer. I do um, cozy art streams on Mondays and Thursdays. I do cozy game streams on Fridays and sometimes on Sundays. I would really, really like to stream that Snufkin game that's just come out, so uh, that might be happening in a couple weeks if I have the mental cutlery to bust out a weekend stream. <laughs> I think that would be really nice. Uh, so we shall see. Uh, but in the meantime, today I am painting this little scene. I've got some, I've got some paints with which to do it. Um, and I don't have any paint water because paint, my paint water is in the other room because, um, I kind of, I ran, I ran in when I heard the raid alert, <laughs> like an absolute ding dong. Uh, but yes. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to set my paints out real quick and then I'm going to do a super fast BRB to grab my, my drinks, of which I have several, um, and then I will take you on a tour of my beverages, and then maybe, maybe, just maybe, we'll actually get some painting done this stream, but that remains to be seen. Don't let's, don't let's get ahead of ourselves. I also have no paint water in this cup, so I should probably do that as well. Uh, so one moment, please, chat. I'm gonna, um, <clears throat> sorry to wander off so quickly, uh, but I had to get my beverages, of which I now have several. Thank you for the welcome back. It's nice to be back. 
Good times. Hello. <laughs> Anywho, let me catch up with chat because I think I've missed some, some, some chitter chat and I would like to see. Uh, Roll says, you are the amazing, fantastic bean. No, you. No, you are. You, right there. You. You. You are amazing, fantastic bean. So there. Um, <laughs> but what will you drink? Asks Theo. Oh boy. Three beverages. Three, three beverages. Um, just the, the right amount. Um, my current beverage is Lem Sip, says Casa. Oh my goodness. I hope it makes you feel better. Cause I don't know about you, but I do not like the way it tastes at all. <coughs> um, but, uh, but good luck. And I hope it is, uh, comforting and makes you feel better. Uh, I've never had a Lem Sip, says Theo. It is a, it is a beverage that is sweet and fruity and also full of medicine for when you're under the weather. Um, it's bizarre. Um, <laughs> black currant is nice. Lemon is icky, says Cassa. Interesting. The, the weird thing is back in Canada, we had like a version of Lem Sip that I think only came in lemon flavor, but I really liked it. So I thought I was going to like Lem Sip and I hate Lem Sip. <laughs> so weird. Anyways, um, Aoife, welcome in. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? It's lovely to see you. Welcome on in. Hello. Um, I hope you're having a lovely Thursday. It is wonderful to see you. Um, and oh goodness, tonsillitis slash throat infection. Cassa, I am sending all of the wellness, feel good vibes that uh, that exist within my being, which to be fair, given my general state of health is not a lot, but I'm sending them all to you because I want you to feel better. Okay. Please. Anyways, um, <laughs> uh, I was taught not to, not to paint at people. Was that, is that pointing? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for, I'm sorry for, I, I think I point a lot because I've only got my hands to, I don't have my face to gesture with on stream. So I have to try and establish my feelings through, through my hands and voice exclusively, which is kind of tricky. Oh goodness. We have a tell me more about coffee and a tell me more about tea. Okay. I'm going to tell you right now that I'm drinking a decaf and it is fine. Um, one thing to be aware of about now, now I do, I do like a good decaf and I do, I do find that a good decaf is sl slightly harder to find than a good, just regular coffee, but I do like a good decaf. This is a mid decaf to be perfectly honest. Um, but, uh, one of the other things to be aware of about decaf is that it does not stay fresh as long as regular coffee. It stales faster so there is always the outside chance if you go someplace and you ask for a decaf or you're having a decaf and you're like, hmm, this isn't very, it's possible that it just isn't very fresh. And some of the good flavors have gone and have been replaced by that sort of mm, taste that you get when a coffee is a little bit older. In my experience anyways. Um, but yeah, decaf is an interesting beastie. You can get some really, really beautiful decafs and a lot of them are just just okay. When you go to a cafe and you ask for a decaf and you see them instead of grinding some fresh beans, they're like, they take out of like a cupboard somewhere, like a single serve foil pouch of coffee. And you're like, oh, this isn't going to be very good. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, this decaf is just mid. And I think part of the reason for that is that I don't drink decaf every single day. So I usually end up having a bag of decaf that hangs around for like a good number of weeks. Uh, which means that once I get to like the back half of it, it's kind of starting to not taste super fresh, which is uh, anyways. So yeah, just something to be aware of with decaf is that it does stale faster. So if you're the kind of person who drinks decaf once every like six months, buying a bag of decaf beans, um, you're, you're going to want to buy the smallest quantity that you can and maybe consider keeping it in the freezer because those things will help. Anyways, we also want to know more about tea. Rad. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I can do that. Um, check, check in with chat first. Um, Aoife says, I slept all day away, which sounds really nice, to be honest. And God, I wish that were me, except I would absolutely feel guilty um, about the fact that I didn't get anything done because that's, I, I crave rest and time off. And then anytime I'm not working on something, I'm like, this is time I should be doing something. I think it's a side effect of the whole executive dysfunction thing where I'm like, okay, I need to work on this thing. And then I ended up just spending two hours like sitting and scrolling because I can't actually force my body to do the things that I want it to do. Anyways, enough about me. <laughs> Ooh, hello. Cassis says, 
Lemsip has some fancy flavors like apple and cinnamon, blood oranges, and something else I forget what, but few places have them. I've literally never seen anything other than lemon and blackcurrant. That's wild. That's wild. I had no idea. I'm kind of, you know, I'm intrigued by blood orange especially because blood orange is the gothest of oranges and therefore my favorite. <laughs> but wow, I had no idea. That's interesting. Dan says, wait, wait, wait. Did I just hear stale used as a verb? Yes. Is that wrong? Did I make a mistake? Please don't tell me I made a mistake. I'll cry. Anyways. Uh, I'm learning so much, says Theo. Yay! Glad I could, glad I could, um, tell, tell some things. Um, <laughs> uh, Zafra says, good point. Thank you. I, 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 I like to think that I'm good at pointing. Um, Aoife says, I was told yesterday that the one C I recently got might well be one C too many to get a PhD grant, which kind of just, ooh. Whoever says that, I don't like them. I don't like them. And also, as as someone who's been through the sec the post-secondary education system, I feel that stress and I hope that everything will be okay and that you'll find you'll find a way through. You will find a way through. I promise you will find a way through. Um, but yeah. Maybe that's why I like blood oranges so much. Is that just hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, so I've also been asked to talk about tea. Tea today is two caffeine-free choices. Um, this is buttermint tea, which I like because it tastes like, it tastes like a Murray mint. So it's minty and it's sweet, but it has no caffeine in it. And I like to call it Murray and it's my friend because Murray is a nice name. That's all. Um, and my other tea, this one, this is, this is Christmas cranberry pie and it is extremely red. And it is like, it is basically just like fruit and cinnamon kind of situation, which I find really cozy and comforting. Does, does anyone, is cranberry pie something that anyone thinks of as like a, a thing that you do? Is, like, is cranberry pie a thing? Because I've only ever heard of it in the context of this tea. But I just want to mention, this tea is also a very, very bright red. And the reason for that is that they put hibiscus in it. In general, if you have a tea that is a very, very bright red, or you want your tea to be very bright red, you put hibiscus in it. Because hibiscus is a very potent source of very, very, very bright red or sort of pink coloring uh, that lends itself wonderfully to um, to tea drinks. It also has like a nice sort of tart flavor in and of itself, which also works really well with a lot of fruity tastes. So you find a lot of hibiscus in fruit teas for that reason. Some people are really not a fan of it. Um, I find that it doesn't give a ton of flavor just in and of itself, apart from that sort of tartness. Um, so yeah, I'm a fan. And that is a delicious cup of tea. So there. Anyways. <laughs> um, oh, Aoife says, my advising profession who have got a bit of a crut. Oh dear. Okay, I will. I won't listen. If you like them, I won't shake my fist at them. Um, apologies. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Oh no, reading books with sadness on the train. Oh no. Oh no. No, you should read, you should read happy things or I don't know. I, listen, I'm not the boss of you. You can do whatever you feel like. Um, but sometimes a bit, sometimes a bit of literary catharsis is a good thing. I do, I do enjoy that that kind of so well it depends is it am i crying because it's like because the it's just like it's just it's just you know sort of horrible things happening to people continuously and is basically torture porn because in which case i'm not i'm not uh, that's not good crying if it's just like i love these characters with my entire heart as if they were my dearest friends and i just want to wrap them up in a little blanket and cradle them in my hands and tell them that they're loved um that, that, that's a, that's a good cry for me. That's a cheaper than therapy cry for me. <laughs> uh, beans. Anyways. Um, so books. <sighs> Have you heard about this new thing called books? Um, I, I have an interesting relationship to books and as much as I worked in a library for about a gazillion years and, uh, I also have a literature degree, which means that I don't really read a lot of books these days. Because I think I maxed out, I maxed out my, uh, 
my attention during, <laughs> during the course of doing a literature degree, and now I don't have any left. Hello, Eddie. Welcome in. How are you doing? Lovely Thursday. Wonderful to see you. Hope you're having a good one. Hello, hello. Uh, books? Says Eddie. Yes, many, many book. Many, many book. So many book. Um, ooh. That is a long username. This is going to take me a while to get all of the syllables, but I shall try. Oh, oh no, it's going to... Just Pablo will do. Okay, thank you, Pablo. Hello, Pablo. <laughs> Who says, there were two peanuts walking down the street and one of them was assaulted. Peanut. <laughs> Classic. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Ah, it was about casual cruelty in the 1930s neighborhood. That sounds fun. That sounds fun. I, lo I love that. Uh, Pablo, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome on in. Hello, hello. Um, and thank you very much for the uh, for the silly goof as well. I appreciated it. <laughs> uh, Cassa says, I don't get that emotional with books, but I like watching a series where it makes me emotional. Um... But I already watched the series, so I know it all works out. I do appreciate that. I do appreciate that. I once had, you know, back in like, back like a gazillion years ago, I did, um, I did, in, in my younger days, in my, in, in my twenties, I, um, I, I briefly, I briefly dated someone. And one of the, one of the signs that like, mm, I think maybe I should just be friends with this person was the derisive way in which they, they were like, wait, do you only like stories with happy endings? And I'm like, no, no, I don't, I don't mind stories that don't have happy endings. Um, I like an ambiguous ending. I like, uh, things are not great, but maybe there's some glimmer of hope endings. I don't super love a lot of, like, everything is just bad forever endings, but it really depends on the context. But I think, I don't remember what we were talking about, but I was just like, eh, you know, that's a little bit, it was, it was about something that was just a little bit too grim dark for my taste. And that's not really where my interests tend to lie in, in, in media. But also, I think it implies that there's something less serious or sort of childish or not as of literary merit to things that have happy endings. And I think that's just nonsense. I think happy endings are good for... I think happy endings are good for people. I think it's, it's good to have stories that have happy endings. I think it's important for people to be able to see stories that have happy endings. Um... And I think the implication that, that su because something has a happy ending, it's not of, of as great a literary merit is just, it's just pretentious. Um, how do I say this in a way that's safe for stream that won't get me exclamation mark languaged? Mm. <laughs> nonsense. Let's just call it nonsense. Yeah, Theo agrees. It's nonsense. Every, it like, what, whatever endings you prefer is fine. Thank you. <laughs> we have an exclamation mark language in the chat. So, Sothra says, now you have one free. Okay, it's bullshit. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, cow doo doo says, Eva, yes. Um, who also says, I connect so much with Shirley Jackson's books that I thought about maybe being her reincarnation. Ooh. Oh, very cool. Eva Jackson, go, go write more books. Go write more books. Go do. Win yourself some awards. Um, we'd love that for you. <laughs> Anyways. I, oh, you know, I was, I, I think I ranted about this on one of my social media accounts, but there was a, there was a writing <coughs> sort of submission window opportunity thing that arose that I saw a couple weeks ago um, for an opportunity to write like a short, like 10 minute theater piece to be performed at this, at this night in, in London. Um, and I decided it wasn't for me for various reasons, but it was one of those ones where they're basically what they're trying to say, I think in a way that is aiming to be inclusive is they're saying that they're looking for submissions from people who aren't men. Um, who I suppose we, we feel like are more likely to be underrepresented in terms of having works published, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, I, I, I'm here for that. Um, but anytime I see, 
anytime I see something looking for something from like women and non-binary people that's from a source that I don't know, like I'm not familiar with the people who are running the thing, I don't know how like queer or queer friendly they are, I'm always a little bit wary because I'm never sure whether they're basically what, you know, like what, what, like what they're defining as like how they're defining non-binary or if they're basically just looking or because there have been situations where, you know, they're like women are non-binary people, but they basically mean sort of like women and people who look like they were assigned female at birth with, you know, asymmetrical haircuts wearing dungarees. And that's really uncool, you know, like a women plus kind of thing. And I'm like, that is not the breadth of non-binary identity by any stretch. And... I, I tend to avoid these submission windows and opportunities when they make that stipulation because I simply don't know whether they actually mean to be inclusive of anyone who falls under the the NB identity or they're just looking for, you know, people with asymmetrical haircuts and dungarees. Um, and I don't want to assume the worst from anybody because I think I'm sure a lot of them are like legit and just genuinely looking for, you know, sort of people who don't identify as male, which is a fine distinction if you want to make it. But especially when a lot of the branding feels like it's about women, it makes me a little bit dubious. So, so I didn't. And, and also genuinely a lot of the, not really a lot of the things that I write are centered around me talking about or exploring, you know, sort of my identity through like a my gender lens. You know, I'm, <laughs> I don't think they want a submission of a short play about like ghost hunters or, you know, a short play about, oh, what's something I'm working on right now that I can tell you about? Um, I'm writing a short story about a man who has been tasked by his workplace to make a short film about how to apply for a passport. And he is taking this opportunity altogether too seriously in the hopes of producing a cinematic masterpiece. I don't think that's what they're looking for. Anyways. Um, but yeah, so, so that's my rant. Uh, and that's my struggle. Um, cause for various reasons and because of my own, uh, what, whatever the heck I am, I don't know what my gender is. ADHD. My gender is ADHD. Uh, when, and, and that means that a lot of the time when opportunities come up that are like for women, I'm like, Hmm, I mean, am I misgendering myself if I enter this opportunity? Cause I don't feel like I fit. Um, it's just really hard to find writing opportunities that are actually for someone who is as nebulous and spirit like as me. Um, <laughs> anywho, uh, I wouldn't trust, um, Oh, I wouldn't try. Oh, Aoife. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Theo says, there's also nothing wrong with being cis or a cis man. Absolutely. Some of my dearest friends are cis and cis men. And I love them very much. Of course there isn't. Um, <laughs> Eddie says, uh, what, what? Why wouldn't they want a submission about, be about being Ed the pirate man? Tee <laughs> Uh, I mean, I did, I did the very first time that I saw it, Our Flag Needs Death, I was like, oh, hello, that's gender. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me, but here we are. Anywho, um, gender is optional, says Casa. I wholeheartedly agree. It is, it, it is, it is there if you want it, but you don't have to. And, and I, I don't, I don't, it's, uh, no, I'll pass. Thank you. It's like potato salad. Gender is like potato salad for me. For the most part, I'll pass. Um, especially if it's got boiled eggs in it and mayonnaise. For sure. Um, but, you know, if it's like the sour cream and chives, um, I might I might check it out. Um, if it's got dill in it. like I'm, Okay, it is no longer like potato salad because now I'm just thinking about the fact that there's potatoes <laughs> in the kitchen that I don't currently have a use for. And I was going to make stuffed aubergines tomorrow, but now I kind of want potato salad. But I think, I think that the aubergines should probably be eaten first because they're squishy foods and potatoes keep for months under the, under the sink. Anyways, <coughs> you'll take the gender if there's olive oil and fresh herbs or sour cream, says, uh, says Theo. Yes, exactly. That's, yes, my gender is olive oil and fresh herbs and occasionally sour cream. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> gender is truly exhausting sometimes, says Eddie. It's, it's weird. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, uh, Aoife says, a cis man friend of mine was ranting about cis men recently, and me and his girlfriend looked at each other kind of simultaneously, realizing he thinks that cis means bigot. Oh, no! Oh, no! It is a... No, I think I I genuinely am confused by and I don't want to I don't want to go on about um about this stuff, but um I genuinely some people who are like upset by being called something like like they think like they think it's a loaded term that has a value judgment inherent in it. It's not. It just it just describes what you are. That's just what you are. Like it's fine. Don't worry about it. Anyways, our new office building has gender neutral toilets, which is nice. That is nice. That's very nice. I love that for you. Um, that's awesome, Casa. Uh, Eddie's a stuffed aubergine, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I haven't... Listen, okay, here's the thing about stuffed aubergines, is that I had them once about somewhere between 15 and 20 years ago at the Moosewood Restaurant in upstate New York, which is... Um, if you are familiar, it is a restaurant that has been here, that has been there since like the early seventies, I think. Uh, they, they've produced many cookbooks that the Moosewood cookbook is like very famous cookbook, um, that they produced many, many, many years ago. And it's one of those cookbooks that like, it feels like it was written by hippies because like all of the recipes are like handwritten, you know? Uh, hey Zim Zam Zop, welcome in, how are you doing? Lovely to see you, super famous, for real, for real, yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, so anyways, I was at the Moosewood restaurant, and one of the specials they had on that day was a stuffed aubergine, and I was like, my interest has been piqued, and there's nothing in it that I'm allergic to, so I'm gonna get that, and so I got that, and it was so good, and I have been wanting to attempt to recreate the magic for literally over a decade. <laughs> so, um, we've got two, two beautiful, beautiful big aubergines in the fridge, and tomorrow we will be stuffing aubergines. So many aubergine emotes in the chat! <laughs> Listen! I know! But they are delicious. Um... Oh, goodness gracious. Um, two beautiful big aubergines for stuffing. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I'm going to do. But yeah, Cass is right. Small aubergines are beautiful too. Medium-sized aubergines. I personally, I love an average, an average medium-sized aubergine is, is, is wonderful. Um, <laughs> you know, any size, any size is good. Absolutely. Aoife says, okay, that cookbook looks great. It's wonderful. And they even have the pick of stuffed eggplant right in front of me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Any size eggplant is good. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. They're all, they're all delicious. The little ones, the little, you know, you, when you get like the little, the little ones that are like, that are like teeny tiny, like, like, like little cherry tomatoes. Um, the ones that are just like the really sort of like long, thin ones. And then the ones that, that are just like, mammoth they're all beautiful and they're all delicious and um real good in like a tomato saucy kind of situation so nice in like in like a thai curry kind of situation they're just so good um <laughs> just need to know how to prepare it correctly with with care and love and patience you, you, you can do it. Perfectly bite-sized one, says, uh, says Theo. Yes, exactly. Um, Sam Zamzoff says, honestly, I like the small ones better than I can fit them in my mouth. Exactly. Then you don't have to, you don't have to do any slicing and dicing, which is nice. In a vegetarian moussaka situation, Casa, you are so right. Oh, anyways. So I will be stuffing some aubergines, <laughs> is my point, on, uh, the tomorrow night. Tonight I'm just having a vegetable soup. And when I say I'm having vegetable soup, I mean I am opening a container of ready-made vegetable soup and microwaving it for six minutes. Mm mm. Because I don't I don't normally have a lot of effort in the after stream, so so that's why. Oh man, you know the the last time I had musaka I think was on an in flight, and believe it or not, it was actually delicious. Anyways. Um, Selena, hello, welcome in. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. It's lovely to see you. Six whole minutes. I have, my microwave is not very high wattage, so I have to cook it for like whatever the maximum amount they say on the packet and then add an extra 30 seconds. <laughs> Anyways, 
Uh, oh my goodness, Aoife says I made a, a great salad yesterday and lost my ring in it. Oh no, but found it without hurting my teeth. Oh, you poor thing, but I'm glad you found it. Oh no. Uh, Kobe says, I'm sorry, I just arrived. I didn't realize this was a stream of filth. It is not. We're talking about aubergines. I'm making stuffed aubergines for dinner tomorrow night. It's going to be delicious. Sam Sam Zop says, uh, silly question. What's the difference between an in-flight and an out-flight? Just the final destination? Um, I just... It's in flight if it's on an aeroplane, and it's out flight if it's anything that transpires at any point anywhere in time or space that is not on an aeroplane. Does that help? And yes, quite right. Aoife says all the filth was in your head. Exactly. I was talking about vegetables. I don't know what you all were thinking. Jeez Louises. Jesus Louises. What, what the heck is happening here? All right. Uh, I'm going to make... I'm going to make some paint. And when I say make some paint, I mean I'm going to pick up some paint off of my little palette. And I'm going to mix them together until I get a color that I think is good. I have very weird music stuck in my head right now, incidentally. Because I am... Um, for for a creative project that will probably never see the light of day, I, I had to make a mashup of two different... Um, two different tracks from Epidemic and, like, pull out all of the different, like, instrumentation stems and Frankenstein them together. It's, it's so, it's so bad. It's deeply unsettling. But that was the point. So I'm very happy with it. Anyways, uh, but I've got part, I've got parts of that music stuck in my head right now and it is really, ah, ha, 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 it is something. Anyways, um, all the filth is in your head and in mine, says Eva. So it's an outflight if it's a hot air balloon. Ooh, that's a good point. Okay, flying vessels that you may be in in general. I suppose I'll, I'll have to I'll have to go further because I suppose I suppose it might also be spaceships. That's not included in aeroplanes. Um, or I don't think that I don't think in general if you're riding in a helicopter that they're serving meals or showing films, but I don't know. Anyways, uh, do not put human body parts in, in Musaka. No, why would you do that? No, absolutely not. Kobe says, uh, happy Snufkin Day. Happy Snufkin Day to you, too. I, I did pre-order the game, so it will be ready for me to download when I finish stream today. Um, and assuming I can get it to run on one of the, one of the devices I own, I might stream it at some point. I don't know. Anyways. But I'll have to test and make sure that it runs first. Um, but I, which I'm looking forward to doing. But, uh, yeah. Okay, this, uh, I can't, I can barely see what's going on with these bookshelves. They're very kind of compressed and confusing. Do, 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 do. I think there's just generally less less visible shelf because of the weird sort of angle that we're at here. So I'm just gonna da, 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 da. like th I think I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's it. Oh my god. Okay. Anyways, um, have you seen that movie American Pie? Uh, putting body parts in food has some value. Like I have not seen that movie actually. I've never seen it. Um. I didn't, I didn't see it when it came out and then it kind of was no longer relevant. So I don't, I don't actually, um, I don't actually know anything about that movie. Is that, is that weird? Is that weird? I feel like I missed what was something of a cultural phenomenon at the time, but whenever it came out, I think I was, I was busy thinking in, about other things and doing other things. And sometimes it's like that. I miss a lot of cultural phenomena. I don't, I don't, there's a lot of movies I haven't seen. Which is very normal and very cool of me. Um, and then I'll watch the same movie like seven times a year. Um, one one of those movies has vampires in it. I think I've seen that movie more than any other movie in my whole life. That's normal. Except maybe Nuns on the Run, which is the movie I... Hello, 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 hello. Am I back? Am I live again? Ah! Anyways, 
Uh, sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Um, I was just, I was just chit-chatting away, and then suddenly it was, like, reconnecting. Uh, my internet was up and running, everything else seemed to be fine, uh, but I couldn't send messages in the chat, and, uh, nothing else seemed to be working. I now have zero viewers, which is, uh, great. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming that that's not true. I'm assuming some people are, are still here and, and know that I was having a technical difficulty and, and was, uh, restarting the computer or attempting to do something like, but never mind. Anyways, hello. Um, <laughs> we are back. Hello. Well done, Comcast. This is Arthur's. I don't, what is my internet provider? It's, um, Plusnet, I think. It's, they're usually pretty good, but, uh, but anyways. Hello. Uh, so sorry to, to have been absent for that period. It's wonderful to be back. I missed you. I missed you. It's always Comcast's fault, says Zathras. I'll have to take your word for it. Oh, goodness gracious, but I am back. Thank you for the welcome backs from my lovely, lovely friends. Now, let me see if I can uh, catch up with chat and see what, what I missed. There's a lot of, oh, oh no, uh-oh, RIPs, etc., etc. Um... Oh dear. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so sorry. Uh, thank you for the Fs in the chat. I do appreciate it. Um, and, uh, and I'm genuinely sorry that that happened. I don't know why. Sometimes the internet just decides to do a funny or Twitch decides to do a funny. And it seemed like after, after interrogating a, a couple of things, it seemed like the only way to solve it was actually just to restart my machine. Because I think the internet was doing a funny... Um, in as much as the, the stream said it was reconnecting, but then I went to, to try and send a chat message in like the Twitch website and it was like, welcome to chat, connecting to chat. And it, then it wouldn't connect to chat. So, uh, here we are. Hello. I'm back. I'm back and I'm painting. It's all fine. Don't worry about it. Thank you for, thank you for rejoining me as well. I do, I do appreciate it. It's nice to see you all again. It's wonderful to be here. <laughs> um, have I forgotten what we were talking about? Yes, that's probably for the best. Um, anyways, how is everybody doing? How's your Thursday going? I hope you're having good ones. How have your, we how have your weeks been? What did you get up to this week? Did you do anything fun? I, I have been overburdened by meetings, if I'm being honest, which kind of, in general, I would say is not fun for me, but you know... It's also a necessary evil, unfortunately. But um, I've also been burdened with getting to draw silly stuff, and that always feels really good. So I've certainly, I've certainly enjoyed that. Uh, Zathos is going for a nap. See you hopefully on the other end. Have a wonderful nap and a fantastic lurk. And thank you so much for hanging out, my friend. It was lovely to see you. Um, sweet dreams. And have a good one. All right. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go again. Oh, there's so the oh, there's very there's very little to paint in here. Oh heck. Oh heck. There we go. Okay. It it just about works. It just about works, I think. Um Thea says, "Oh, how my browser update <laughs> didn't update, but now I'm here. Hello. 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 I'm so sorry that it didn't update. I've only been back for a couple minutes. You haven't missed anything. I painted in this bit. Um it and it looks fine. <laughs> but welcome back. I am once again so very sorry um for the the momentary service disruption. Um I don't know if it's going to play Merry Havoc with my, like, when I try and look at my stream gubbins later on, but, uh, that's fine. Um, when it, like, when, when you're offline long enough for it to, like, separate it out into, like, two separate streams, I'm like, no, no, this is confusing. Not that I should be really paying attention to, like, things like analytics anyways, because what they tell you is, is not usually that helpful. Um, because if you're genuinely going through and looking at, oh, what bits of stream did people ha chat the most in, and then try and, like, tailor your content to that, you're just gonna, your, your content is just gonna get boring and repetitive. And that's exactly what people don't want, so. I don't know, I, I find it, ugh, bleh, bleh, bleh. 
I, I get I get real stuck on numbers and then I realize I really shouldn't be looking at numbers. Um Especially anytime, like, if for some reason you see, like, a, a large surge in numbers in, like, one month and then the next month you, you get a little, like, sad down-pointing arrow, be, uh, sad down-pointing arrow being like, oh, less people looked at your videos this month, you should do something about it. It's like, okay, okay, you know what, go away. <laughs> go away. The month before that was extraordinary. It's, it's fine. Whatever the numbers are are fine. Anyways. But I think, I think I talked about this, um, I think I talked about this last week as well, or possibly earlier this week, that, like, I, I posted a short video to my YouTube channel that was just a little, a little look at me working on something in my, um, sketchbook and sort of talking about how, how I'd like to use my sketchbook and incorporating using a sketchbook into your regular um, sort of creative practice. Um, and it was in general sort of fairly generically about sort of the process of artwork in that way. And then I looked at my, my YouTube analytics and it's like, here are the topics people were looking for when they, when we showed them your video and they were things like Roblox game and Avatar the Last Airbender reaction video. <laughs> YouTube, what are you doing? This has nothing to do with Avatar The Last Airbender. If I was looking for, like, reviews and reactions to Avatar The Last Airbender, and I got shown a video that was just somebody working on an unrelated artwork in their sketchbook, I'd be like, I don't want to see this. And, like, swipe away. Or, you know, like, click out of it. Or give it a thumbs down. Not because it isn't good, but because it is. it has nothing to do with what I was looking for. Um... But this seems to be a problem across across the board with a lot of websites these days where, like, we know how to make search engines good. Like, that has been something that the internet has been very good at for years. And in the last couple of years, it really feels like they have been deliberately making search functionality worse. And it is so deeply frustrating. It's not, it's frustrating for people like me who make things that they want the correct people to be able to find them. So, you know, if I make something that is, say, about, I don't know, let's say 18th century tailoring, right? I want people to be able to find that who are looking for 18th century tailoring. If someone is looking for something to do with Married at First Sight Australia and they get you know, an article or a video or a, a photograph or whatever about 18th century tailoring, they're going to be like, well, this is irrelevant and not be interested in it. So, so the fact that this is the kind of thing that, that, that is apparently happening is, it's really frustrating. I mean, I suppose they're kind of going off of sort of a, some kind of insane algorithmic, oh, well, if you like this, you might like this other thing. But I don't know. that. I don't think that's always how it works. I don't think that's always how it works. Sometimes you would just like to see the specific thing that you are looking for. And that feels like it's getting harder. Um, at least, it's been at least a year, I think, with Instagram having done this thing where if you want to search a hashtag on Instagram and have a look at what things people have posted to that hashtag, it will show you, it used to be you'd get like top posts. So I guess like the, the most well, well engaged with posts over like sort of a specified period of time that, that Instagram has, um, uh, invented or recent posts. So, you know, here's, Here's a post from five minutes ago. Here's a post from two hours ago, et cetera, et cetera. Just a chronological feed of all of the things that use this hashtag, which is ideal for me because a lot of the time I don't, I don't want to see the same 12 posts over and over and over again. I want to see, I want to see what's new in a tag and I want to see all of it, regardless of how, how top Instagram thinks it is. I would like to see all of it. Um, but they have changed it now to top posts and recent top posts, which means there is stuff that is actively not searchable 
despite using those hashtags, which is frankly infuriating. As someone who makes stuff that I would like people to see, as like as an artist who's trying to find an audience, but likewise, um, but likewise as someone who wants to look for things, you know, sometimes like if I'm doing, if I'm doing like a, like an, an art month or like an, an art prompt challenge with like a specific, where we're like using a specific hashtag to find other people's works where they've used these art prompts. I want to see everything that people have done using these hashtags and using these art prompts because I would like to, I want to see what other people have done to like fulfill that brief because I find it really exciting and interesting. But also the fact that people are taking part in these challenges, I want to uplift and support them and give them engagement and share their stuff with my, you know, like followers. Um, and I can't do that if I literally am unable to search for them. It's, I don't have a solution to this apart from make the internet not crappy. You know how to do it. Just fix it. But they won't. And I don't have a good solution for this apart from I wish more people would use Mastodon because right now it is honestly just nerds. Um... <laughs> But the engagement is so much better because you can actually find things and see things unlike anywhere else. <laughs> Anyways, Eddie says, Sammy, we're all just silly. Big Daddy Internet obviously knows what we want, which is to make them money. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, Theo says, if I get back to any kind of posting ever, I will attempt Mastodon. I wholeheartedly rec rec recommend Elephant Sight. Um... I've honestly find it, found it very, very useful, and uh, I'm, I'm following a nice sort of carefully curated group of people on there. Uh, some, some artists, some just fun pe just some people I know. Um, and so my feed is, is fairly quiet, but I like that. But also, if I, if I post things there, people actually reply to me. Which is really nice. <laughs> like, I actually get to have, you know, like, conversations with people, which is, feels kind of rare. I don't know. It's good. It's, it's good. It's a good site. Anyways. Um. Obviously, the, the one, the one difference with, with any social media, I think, is that the, the vibe will be different depending on who, what users you're following. I do appreciate that it is one of those spaces where you can curate it by like, um, muting certain key, you can follow, you can follow hashtags if you want, but you can also mute keywords, which is really special and important to me because there's a lot of stuff that, to be honest, I just, sometimes I'm just too tired to engage with some things I just have zero interest in, but I know that like other people I know do, um, and I can just, I can just not look at any of that. And that feels really good. It's nice. Feels good. Anyways, um, if I get back to any kind of posting ever, I will attempt Mastodon. I, yeah, I do recommend it, Theo. Uh, Eddie says, I'm so afraid and uncomfortable with new things that I've not been brave enough to try that out. That is 100% totally fair. I also get, like, when we were all leaving Twitter, which I don't know about y'all, but I didn't actually leave Twitter. I'm still very active on there. Um... But, uh, but, um, when we were all sort of like, okay, you can now find me on this website instead or that website or the other. And it just seemed like a lot of people were very sort of just like scattered five different directions on the wind. And, um, anytime that that's happened for me, when there's been sort of a great, a great social media migration, there's always the frustration that like, you don't know which site is going to be the one where most people land. And are you going to get on with that site? Is there going to be a policy that you vehemently disagree with on that site? Um, are you just going to not enjoy yourself there? It is, it is struggly. And so I found myself having, so I, I'm on, I'm on Mastodon. I'm on Blue Sky. Um, I think those are the two, the two new ones that I, that I signed up for and actually use. Uh, I'm not super active on Blue Sky. I mostly just use it to post my artwork. And to be honest, I don't know a lot of people on there and I'm struggling to find them. So, um, most of my, 
most of my blue sky feed is just people over 45 talking about old things from Doctor Who. So I don't really go there very often because, eh. Eh. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really into talking about Doctor Who that much anymore for, for many and various reasons. Partly my interest has just moved on. Um, and that's fine. But as a result, I kind of, I kind of just pop on there and I'm like, oh, the horns of Naimon. Okay, whatever. And then, <laughs> then I leave again. Uh, I, I, I will attempt to post my artwork, but I forget to, I forget to let them know that I stream on Twitch, for instance. Um, I'm not signed in to Blue Sky on my phone, so I can't even use it on my phone. Um, but yeah. Uh, Theo says, I did leave, but I did a poor job of it and didn't deactivate my account, and so I was locked out and now have no control over any of it. No! Oh, beans! Oh, that's crummy! Oh, no. I've probably got dead accounts on some sites that, that I just can't get into. Um, like, I think, I think it's, I think a couple years ago someone was like, you know, you can technically still sign into your MySpace profile. And so I tried to look for, like, my MySpace, but I realized I have n absolutely no freaking idea what email I would have used for that. And I have no way of finding out, because whatever email that was is, like, long since dead. So, mm. Uh, Eddie says I just went back to Tumblr a lot, to be honest. Mm, yeah, Tumblr is good. Tumblr is good, but Tumblr is kind of where I go to be, like, a feral gremlin. Um... So I can't really be as much of a professional on there. And sometimes I need to be a little bit professional and I just, I just don't want to make another second account. I have two, I have two accounts on Twitter. I have my, I have my semi-professional, here's where you can find out when I'm streaming and here's my, a link to my shop kind of, um, uh, main main twitter and then i have a second twitter that no one follows and you can't have the username of where i just go to be a gremlin about the pirate show um so yeah shelves are looking great and shelfy says theo oh thank you so much i'm glad they're looking shelfy <laughs> i was very worried uh as i started in working on this that they were gonna not make sense and i still i'm not 100 percent sure that they make sense but you know i think we're maybe getting there i think we're maybe getting there okay um I maybe want to color in the outsides of the shelves as well now. I think I maybe want to color in the outsides of the shelves. Oh, beans. That makes me nervous. Very shelf. No reason to worry. They look very good, says Theo. Oh, thank you much. Thank you much. I'm glad that they're very shelf. That is exactly what, as they should be. They should be very shelf. Okay, let's make... A shade of brown. I am absolutely here for these shelves not matching each other because these shelves will have been bought at various times throughout the lifespan of this shop and therefore I don't expect them to all be the same color of brown. So I'm so I'm out here making what I like to call multiple browns. So I'm going to start. I'm going to start with this. I'm going to start with this one. Very shelf. It makes you want to go to a bookstore, says Eddie. Hell yeah. I do. I do love. I do love a bookstore. I love a bookshop. I love. Um, I love a good library as well. I hate the song I've got stuck in my head because it is from an ad for a phone that I keep seeing there. So it's a, it's a phone camera that has this feature where like you, you take, it takes multiple takes of a photo and then you can choose, you can pick like elements of like the, the, the best one and sort of mash them together into like a Franken photo just inside your phone. Um, but the results, even the results on the ad look a little bit uncanny to me. Like, it's like, oh, you know, sort of, I'm going to pick and choose from, like, these three different photos which one that all the people have the best smiles and then, like, superimpose different faces onto the... It's just, it's just weird. I don't like it. 
I don't like it. I also, it also just continues this idea of presenting something as though this is exactly what the real world was like when actually it's been carefully sort of manipulated into looking as perfect as possible, which I just find deeply depressing. Um, you know, I want, I want to see imperfection. I want to see, I want to see things, I want to see things that aren't perfect. I want to see that photo where the one person is blinking, you know? Just, just let me, just let me have that. We don't need to, we don't need to superimpose ourselves into a world where just everything, everything is artificial and you can't trust any photo ever. It's just, I'm just, listen, I'm just depressed. I want to see normal humans be human, says Eddie. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, oh God, that ad annoys me so effing much, says Eddie. It's just, it's just the worst. It is just the worst. I hate it. And the song is really annoying and it plays like every ad break on my YouTube and it makes me want to just cry and I will never buy that phone. So the ad is working if what they want is for me to never buy that phone. Like, good job. Uh, anyways, um, if you've never seen that ad and you don't know the song in it, I am so jealous, <laughs> honestly. So jealous. Anywho, um, speaking of normal humans being human, all of the ads I'm getting on Twitter right now are for makeup. Um, it's a makeup company that I do not want to support because they, um, uh, because of political stuff. So I will not name them. Um, but, um, it's also one of those things where like, I don't know. They show like before and after pictures with like their, their magic makeup that matches everyone's skin tone. And I'm like, and, and I'm just like, but oh, okay. But like the before pictures look fine also. Like makeup is, makeup is good if, if you would like to, but also, I don't know. I get mad at like makeup ads where it makes it feel like, like your skin is not good enough. You know, it's just like, eh, eh. Uh, you know, I like, I like the dimensionality of human skin. I like that it has texture and like tonal variations and interesting undertones that make it really annoying to try and paint accurately. Um, I like that actually. And I really hope that people don't feel like they have to, they can't, they can't be seen with that. And it makes me feel sad when, when they do. Anyways, um... But yeah, like, uh, like Eddie says, uh, wrinkles are so natural and good. Give me freckles and spots and what? Oh, I love freckles, 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 freckles. Also like freckles and laugh lines and, and all of that stuff. It's good. It's good. It, it says that you're a person and you're alive and that's beautiful. I say that also being very annoyed by the fact that my, my rosacea got extra tomato the other day and I was like, oh god, I look like a tomato. <laughs> I need to figure out what's... I need to get to the bottom of what's causing this and fix it, but, you know, apart from that. Ah... <sighs> Uh, Theo says, makeup moving away from here's the thing to cover up so-called blemishes. And I understand sometimes, you know, like, sometimes you do get a spot and you're just like, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make that not be so visible because I don't want that th to be the only thing that people can see when they look at my face. I get that. I totally get that. Um, towards carefully paint an entire mask to sit atop your face. Mmm, mmm. With, like, the, like, the heavy contouring and stuff where it's not just like, okay, I'm gonna... I'm looking, I'm looking a little bit, you know, sort of, I'm looking a little bit spotty or I'm looking a little bit red. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put a little something on top of that to kind of even it out. Okay. To, uh, it's like five layers and it, you look like you've been airbrushed. Um, again, I don't want to, I'm, I don't want to judge anyone's aesthetics if that's, what makes you feel good about yourself, then cool. But also, I hope that you know that you don't need that to look good. Because you do not. Um, your own face is perfect just the way it is. Okay. Okay. Anyways. Um, and, oh yeah, the whole the whole thing about sort of, like, youthfulness and, like, young skin and yada yada yada. It's like, mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, 
But also, I do think in many ways, like, putting, having too much, having too much on your face does kind of, like, age your skin as well, because it will kind of, it will kind of sit inside any, like, you know, like, lines and stuff on your skin and actually make them look more obvious a lot of the time. So, anyways, my point is, it's your face, do what you want, but do not let adverts pressure you into thinking you have to look a certain way. Whatever your chosen aesthetic is, fantastic. I love that for you. I love, I love a good fun, I mean, I don't, I don't wear lipstick that often anymore because I'm usually wearing a mask on the bus or in large crowded areas when I go out, and I don't want to get lipstick all over the inside of that because it's nasty and it's really hard to wash off. Um, like it doesn't, like it will stain even when I put it through the laundry, which I do not love. Um, and it just, it, it, it makes a mess anyways. Um, potentially is making a mess of my face in there, uh, for when I do, when I do go outside and take it off again. But, um, because of that, I don't, I don't get to wear lipstick that often anymore. And it does make me a little bit sad because sometimes it's fun to just have like a pop of cool color or whatever, you know? Um, like, that's rad, but I just don't like these ads that are kind of saying that, like, your your appearance is incomplete if you are just existing in your natural state. No. 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 This, this painty stuff is for fun. It's for funsies and doing cool stuff, you know? <sighs> Anyways. Mr. Hangman, how's it going? Welcome on in. Hello, hello. I hope you're having a beautiful day. We are painting some bookshelves. And I'm gonna have to make so many different shades of brown. <laughs> For these bookshelves. But that's okay. I figure all of these bookshelves are probably brown. Anyways, I hope you're having a lovely Thursday. It's lovely to see you. Welcome on in. Hello, hello. Doot. Okay, using my paintbrush. Using my paintbrush. Oh, my paint went a little bit funny there. That's okay. Alright. Ta-da! Two bookshelves down. Yay! <laughs> Funsies! Oh, we can't do that anymore. It's illegal. Oh, okay. No, this is a, this is a very serious faced stream. Very, very serious faced. Very sensibly faced. There is no fun to be had here. No one is having a good time. We're all miserable. What if they're black bookshelves? Or white? Ooh, they could be. They could be. I don't know. I don't know. I was going to go for a range of browns, but I suppose anything's possible. Um... I feel like white bookshelves are probably the least practical just because they, um, they're going to show dust like so quickly. Sorry. I just noticed there was a bit of shading that I didn't actually add in that I probably should. So I'm adding in that shading now. Anyways, um, the good news is that the music that's stuck in my head changed to the music that plays when you're about to putt in uh super mario golf <laughs> she's very normal of me anyways <laughs> anywho painting streamer apologizes for painting i uh, i don't know how not to apologize for things theo i really don't i'm sorry oh i did it again <laughs> i did it again it's laminated though so it's easy to wipe down since mr hangman i mean i suppose green bookshelf says eddie Ooh. Ooh, nice. I have, I think all of my bookshelves are wood color. I think they're all wood color. Um, I'm looking at one right now and it is definitely sort of a blonde wood situation. I think they came from Argos. They were inexpensive. <laughs> Sammy core. Yes. My, my core aesthetic is, uh, is apologies <laughs> for sure. For sure. Um, <laughs> You're doing great, says Theo, both when you apologize and when you don't. I have just seen the time. And you say I'm doing great, but damn, I have not painted very much yet today. Oh, heck and beans. Oh, biddle boy. I I had thought that I had a lot more. Because now, stream says that I've been up for 30 minutes when we, we know... Um, it's actually been quite a bit longer than that because stream, uh, had a brain fart and I had to restart my computer, which is means that, uh, I've actually been going for quite a while and we haven't actually painted that much today. Oh, embarrassing. I really thought that I'd achieved more, but that's okay. That is entirely fine. What if, what if some bookshelves are just this natural brown? 
which is a really lovely color. It it reminds me, and this is this is niche, but it reminds me of the uh, soy based, plant based chocolate pudding that I like to get from the supermarket as a special treat. <laughs> tee -hee, tee -hee. That's a lot of books, says Mr. Hangman. Are they all going to be different colors? Um, most of them, yeah, for sure. Uh, cheap Ikea bookshelf, says Sledge. Oh, hello, darling. Hello, hello to my beautiful moderator slash spouse, Sledge, my, my dearest darling, my, my, my sweetest love, my beautiful, beautiful person, man. Hello. How are you doing? It's lovely to see you. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, what brand of soy pudding? All pro. Alpro chocolate dessert. I don't know if they actually call it like pudding because it's not pudding in the way that like British think of pudding. But to me, it is just a like a pudding cup. Um, I never told Mastodon that I'm streaming right now. I'm going to tell them that right now. Well, let me. Uh, doing an art stream. Come hang out. And then a little linky do. Uh, because I'm going to be live for a little bit longer, so I may as well. <laughs> Sorry, I just opened my phone to look at what a they actually call this, um, all pro stuff. Um, anyways, headed home now. See you soon, babe. Oh, have a wonderful journey home, my dear. I love you so much. Big, big smoochies. Um, all pro chocolate pudding is really good, says Theo, especially with raspberries. Ooh, I bet that's good. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, that sounds delightful. What do they call it in the UK? Because I think it's... A, they, they just they just call it chocolate dessert. They call it silky smooth chocolate dessert. But to me, it's a pudding. It's a pudding cup. Eddie, thank you so much for the lurk. Thank you, thank you. I hope you have a lovely, lovely lurk time. And thank you for hanging out. It's been lovely to see you as always, my friend. Uh, Theo says, if you want to be extra fancy, you can add some spray whipped cream to it. I think I've done that. Or have I done that with Angel Delight? I might have done that with Angel Delight and not that, actually. Now I'm not sure. Anyways. <laughs> I've done something like that. <laughs> with something. That's not, that's not a helpful statement. Anyways. Um, I'm gonna go sideways for this bit, maybe. No, I'm gonna go upside down. I don't know why it's helpful to me to paint this upside down. I honestly don't, but for some reason, I can't, I could not, I can't work on artworks if I'm not able to just like rotate my, my surface entirely. Sometimes I just need to be able to just do a full rotate, you know, just, just totally. For some reason, this side of the shelf, it just feels better to be painting it upside down. Why? I don't know. I do not know. I always eat burgers upside down, says Theo. Oh, interesting. Is that like a, is it just, I guess it's just easier that way. Um, I confess when I do eat burgos, I tend to, I, I tend to want to just kind of dismantle them. And, uh, and just to eat, like, the component parts with a knife and fork and discard one of the bread pieces. Um, the top bun is so round and it gets in the way. Mm, yeah, absolutely. That's why I eat it with a knife and fork and discard one of the bread pieces. <laughs> to that end, normally, if I'm thinking properly and I go to, like, a burger place, um, I will specifically order a, um... I will order, like, just two or three side dishes instead of a burger. I'll have, like, okay, what, what do they have for side dishes? I'll have some chips, I'll have a salad, and I'll have a chocolate milkshake. That will be my meal, and that will be enough food, and it won't be messy. If they have onion rings, I'll get onion rings. Last time I went to a burger place and ordered the burger, I was so distressed by how difficult it was to eat without, like things especially getting towards the end of the food without things falling out and getting like chipotle mayo on my hands and I don't want to get chipotle mayo on my hands because it's a bad texture um 
just thinking about it is making me mildly stressed because it just becomes this sort of chaotic race to like finish your food, which you're taking tiny bites of so that you don't get chipotle mayo on your face because you're out in the world and you don't want to have to wash your face in a public bathroom because it's weird, but you also don't want to walk around with chipotle mayo on your face. (sighs) Autism. Anyways, um... <clears throat> getting things on your hands is the worst. It truly is. I know you can wash your hands, and I always wash my hands after I eat a meal anyways because, you know, I've been touching food and stuff, but still, still, even just, like, the walk from the table to the bathroom to wash my hands is unpleasant because there's mayonnaise there and I don't want it. To... Oh, Mm. Anyways, so that's why when I go to a burger place, most of the time I will order some chips, which I can dip into the chipotle mayo, which is indeed heckin' delicious, um, and a salad, which comes with a fork, which I wish they would give you with your burger, and, um, and maybe onion rings if they have them. Anyways, uh, last, last time I went out for a meal to a burger place, it was not my choice of restaurant, so... I was kind of hamstrung, and it was a stressful, um, but, uh, but yeah, that's because I, I, you know, I didn't, I never used to think of myself as a picky eater, and I was speaking with it, uh, about it with my spouse a couple days ago, actually. I was like, honey, am I a picky eater? And he's like, no, you just, you have, like, your sensitivities. But that's not the same thing as being picky, and I think he's right. I am quite, in terms of, like, in terms of flavors and dishes and that kind of thing, I'm a very adventurous eater. Um, And I've always been really interested in trying new things, new cuisines, new ingredients. I'm quite, I'm quite experimental sort of in the kitchen in terms of cooking and baking and stuff. But also I will not make baked goods where I have to roll out dough because I can't stand doing it. And... Honestly, the greatest, the greatest accessibility tool for bread baking for me was the bench scraper because it means I never have to touch, I never have to get flour on my hands directly in order to handle the dough. Anyways, uh, (laughs) Theo says it's like the socks thing. Do you have any problems with wearing socks? No, no, I don't. For you see, I have a system. Yeah, that's the thing. Like these, these yes, no questions when, when, you know, like you're being assessed. And they're like, they're like, do you have any problems with wearing socks? And you're like, no, I don't. But the answer is that yes, you do. And you, you have made an entire system of accommodations for yourself <laughs> to make it acceptable to be able to do the thing like wearing socks. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly that. See, I, I've got, I've got a system. Anyways, um, all of this is to say... All of this is to say, now I'm hungry. <laughs> now I'm hungry, and I'm looking forward to having a nice, rustic, vegan vegetable broth. That was, oh, that was something that I noticed when I was visiting America at some point, is that um, I was purchasing a hamper of um, reasonably non-perishable foods, because I was too nice to someone who uh, very much exploited that kindness. Um, but uh, my point is that I I noticed that I was like, ooh, vegetable soup, rad. But then I noticed that it wasn't just called vegetable soup. It was called vegetarian vegetable soup. Because they had to differentiate. Because otherwise, I suppose it may be a vegetable soup because it has vegetables in it, but it was made with, like, chicken broth, which I found really weird. Anyways, um, uh, Theo says, the reason, the years I spent trying to understand why I had entire meltdowns every time I got dressed in the winter, it was because I had to stand in the hall and put on a scarf and I hated the feeling so much. Oh, no! Oh, no! I am so very sorry that you experienced that. That heckin' sucks. Oh, beans. Um, oh, pretzels. Uh, I was going to do a quick BRB. I'm going to do a quick BRB, y'all. Um, and then I'll be back to do, to make more bookshelf situations. One beverage done. Hell yeah. Look at me hydrating my cells like an absolute champ. Beverage number two. 
can live there. I'm going to be RB real quick. Uh, you're all breathtaking. I shall see you shortly. Uh, enjoy, enjoy the BRB screen in the meantime, and the BRB song! Yay! Back in a minute. Hello again. Um, I have a question for chat. I have a question for chat, um, and it is because I am thinking of having some manner of, uh, toast snack after stream, but before soup or maybe after soup. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But at some point, I want to have some kind of a toast snack situation. And so the question that I have for chat is, what what is your preferred toast topping? Um, if you were having a piece of toast, what what are you having on it? Are you, are you going sweet? Are you going savory? Um, give me give me your toast opinions. I feel like I feel like my opinions have been getting real spicy this stream, and I'm trying. I want to dial it back a bit. So let's do something a little bit uncontroversial and talk about toast. Um, what are your what are your toast preferences? What what would you what would you like to put on toast? Uh, I like butter and sliced banana alongside a cup of plant milk. That sounds so cozy. Oh my goodness gracious, that sounds very very cozy of you. I love it. I have no bananas, but that sounds really good. Um, I was I was thinking of maybe I can't decide whether I want to do like a little bit of lactose free mature cheddar cheese, which is something I can do, or maybe um, or maybe like I think I've still got some damson jam. I've got a couple of jams. I've got a rhubarb jam. I think I've got a cherry. And something jam. And then I've got a, uh... And then I've got a, a damson plum jam. Ooh, and possibly some marmalade as well. Maybe a marmalade toast. I haven't had marmalade toast in, in a while. Incidentally, in case you're wondering, and I'm sure you are wondering, the, the toast in question is, is, a, a, is a Vogel soy and linseed bread. Which, uh, I like, I like Vogel's bread. I think Vogel makes a good, a good toast situation. I think it's pleasant. Okay, I think, I think actually painting in this, because this, this bookshelf is, it's, it's at a weird angle, but it's also very small. So, I think actually painting in the, like, structure of the bookshelf will help me see which, which bits want to be, um, which, which bits are shadows that I haven't properly painted in yet. <laughs> Cause I think there are some on this one that I just couldn't quite see because frankly, the, the, the books that I drew in are kind of vague scribbles cause I got confused and scared. And so I just kind of, cause these ones are really, because of, because of the angle and the distance, the, the books on this shelf are really hard to see properly. I feel like. So hopefully this will help remedy that. Anyways, um, let's see how I get on with that. Um, but yeah, I will almost always vote for jam, especially plum jam. Ooh, yes, plum jam is so good. Anything that's plum is likely to be a favorite of mine. Hundo percent. I adore plums. I think they're so good. I think they're so good and it's so nice to make your own plum jam as well mm -mm. delightful okie dokie just gonna give this a little turn so I can do this one and this one do these shelves make sense I'm going to declare it good enough. <laughs> Sometimes good enough is good enough, you know? And I think this is uh, a case of the good enoughs. Hell yeah. It's one of these books is kind of sticking out of the shelf, so. Can't really see much that side of the bookshelf there. Okie dokie. This is, wow, these lines are super wonky. Oh no. 
I'm chalking this up to this bookshelf being very old. And that's it. Definitely not skill issue. <laughs> oh yeah, a little, little bit wiggity wonky here, but you know what? It's just an old bookshelf. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Okay. All right. This is fine. This is entirely fine. Absolutely fine. No worries. Um, but yeah, we've got votes for jam. We've got votes for banana, which is nice. I do like, I do like a butter and jam situation. I like, you know, this is, I don't know if this is going to sound weird. I don't know if this is going to sound weird. Feel free to tell me if this sounds weird. Feel free to disown me and unfollow if you want, if this sounds just too weird for you. But I'm telling you, I am telling you, I will tell you, jam and a nice mature cheese. Apparently this isn't a thing that other people do. It has to be cold cheese, not like melted cheese. It has to be cold cheese because it, it affects the, the textures and the, the, the way that you taste it. But a nice like fridge cold mature cheddar cheese or something in that ballpark and a jam is the business. I probably wouldn't choose a marmalade for this, but I would choose something like a strawberry, like a raspberry, like a wild blueberry. Very nice. And cheese. Um, I'm given to understand that this is, that this is weird to a lot of people. I didn't grow up with it. Just one day I was like, what if I just cheese and jam? What if I just cheese and jam? And I put, and I put the jam on my toast and then I put some slices of cheese on top and I was like, <gasps> Where have you been all my life? This is so good. I'm so happy. And I was so happy and it was so good. Theo says, I really like jam and cheese. Hell yeah. It's so nice to know I'm not the only one. <laughs> Yay. Jam and cheese is so normal to me. I love it a lot. It's really good. If you like both of these things and you like toast and you haven't tried it, I do recommend. I mean, you do see like, the th I think the thing is like cheese and chutney is very, very normal here. Like you, like having like an onion chutney or an apple chutney or a mango chutney or something like that. And then cheese is very normal. Um, jam is just, is just the neighbor of chutney. So, you know, if you think you would enjoy something that's got a little bit of sweetness to it and a little bit of cheesy saltiness, then it just, yeah, it's, it's good. It's really good actually. Um, Alba, hi, welcome in. How are you doing? Um, da, 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 she says, I'll have to give that a try. Yes, you must. You must. It's delightful. Also lovely to see you. Alba. welcome on in. How have you? Hope you're having a wonderful Thursday. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. These bookshelves are taking me so hecking long, <sighs> but we are getting there. We are getting there. It's just, it's just being a journey and that's okay. Okay, I would like lots of this ochre color, please. My, my my whole palette is just brown and browner. That is so funny to me. Okay, how do I... How should I... Uh, one of you. Oh, that was... I added a tiny amount of brown and it just... It just darkened that so much. Oh no, I'm going to have to put so much ochre back on top of it. Mm, I just, I just wanted to take a little bit of the bright sort of ness out of the uh, burnt yellow ochre because it is kind of a bright brown. Oh heck! But I do think it'll be a nice color for these bookshelves back here, specifically uh, this one. Do do do. Anyways, um, <laughs> it's an antique shop. It's very fitting. Says uh, says Theo. Hell yeah. Uh, I want to, I want to visit this shop IRL. I want this shop to exist. I want to go to here and I want to meet these two little guys and I want to tell them I wish them the best. I want to tell them they're going to be okay because I know they're going to be okay because I'm literally writing their story right now. <laughs> ah, I moved my entire work surface just then. Oh no. Oh no. Can I try and re reestablish it being more or less square? Uh, that's close enough. Um, but anyways, yeah. 
Okay. Here we go. Do do do. Just kind of hanging out under this weird balcony canopy situation. This 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 bookshelf also makes no sense in terms of the. I'll post results to the Discord when I remember to actually do the thing. Says Alva. Yes, I would love. I would love to. I would love to know what you think. <laughs> Very much. I would love to know what you think. Um, uh, oh, Theo says such lucky little guys to be written by you. I hope I can do them justice. I hope I'm doing them justice. They're very, these, as, as you can tell by the fact that they keep showing up in my paintings, these little guys are really special to me. Um, and just the little adventures that they're, that they're going on. Very special little guys. You know, they've got, they've got their, they've got their, they've got their special skills. They've got their adventures. They've got their struggles. They're trying their best. And, uh, most importantly, they love each other very much. And, um, and they're just, they're just good. They're just good. There. Yay! It bookshelf. <laughs> I think that one turned out pretty well. There was, oh man, I don't know if it's still there, but in my hometown, there used to be a bookshop called The Bookshelf that was great. It was, it ended up becoming this sort of like multimedia mega building, um, by which I mean, it was a bookshop on like, I think the first and second floor kind of, I don't know, there was like a weird mezzanine situation. And then next door to the bookshop was their cafe. Well, originally, so originally the cafe was like in, in sort of the main building area of the, the bookshop. And it was tiny. Jid Creates, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome on in. Hello, hello. I was just recounting the story of a bookshop that I used to like to go to when I was, uh, when I lived in my hometown. Um, yeah, it was a really cool place. So it was like a bookshop in the, uh, on like the, the ground floor on sort of the left hand side. Uh, and, and on the right hand side was a cafe. They actually ended up buying the, the space to the, to the right of that, expanded the bookshop to be a little bit bigger, and then also had like a big old cafe next to it, which was gr a great place to just drop by and grab like a cup of coffee and a bagel and kind of hang out for a bit. Um, in the, like in the mornings, which I used to do, it was just, it was a really nice chill place to be to get some work done. Um, it was good. And it was right next to a bookshop, which was lovely. And then, and then there's more, <laughs> there's more of, oh, Chid Create says, uh, hi, sorry to interrupt your story. No sorries. Don't, you don't need to apologize. It's lovely to see you. And I, I, I interrupt myself a lot anyways. Don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, I hope you're having a lovely Thursday and welcome on in. Um, so, there's the bookshop, and then there was the cafe next door to the bookshop, which was which is also part of the bookshop's sort of expanding empire. If you went upstairs above the bookshop, there was a cinema that would show a lot of like independent and um, you know sort of like non non Hollywood cinema, which was really fantastic. Um, they they always had a good slate of films on. Um, and then upstairs above the cafe was a bar that also served food, but also where a lot of bands would play. Um, and so was a, like a, a, a very good sort of independent music venue in my town. I don't know if any of this still exists, but oh, biddle boy, uh, did I love it there? It was great. Everything about it was great. Uh, and it was nice seeing, you know, sort of like an independent business thrive that hard, uh, in my hometown. They were very supportive of like local talents as well, which was nice. Um, I didn't, I didn't really do, do anything there, but they did, they did let me put posters up for my art shows, uh, which was very kind. <laughs> what, back when I, back when I used to show my artworks in galleries, can you believe to learn to know? 
most of that at the time was my photography, which I still do a lot of photography, but I don't really, I don't really, um, I don't really exhibit like my photography anywhere. Like I don't post it to my socials much. I just, I take photos, I develop my photos and then no one ever sees them. They just, they just go on my hard drive to die, which I suppose is a little bit sad, but eh, whatever. I don't mind. And also, I don't want to, um, I don't know. I, I feel, I feel weird about, I already don't have any sort of like cohesive brand identity and I hate, I hate the term brand identity to begin with. It's, it's, it's unpleasant for me, but, uh, but still, I think if I were to post photography stuff and, uh, art stuff on my Instagram, it might be, it, it might be weird for a lot of people because Style-wise, they are quite different. Um, and so if you're if you're interested in like one of them aesthetically, you might not be interested in the other. I don't want to. I don't want to annoy people. And also, also just scan because they're film photographs. Scanning in my photographs is a real pain in the backside. Um, because my scanner is not very good. And that really, that really puts a, a bit of a, a bit of an annoyance on actually getting my photo scanned. It's just, it takes so hecking long to scan anything in with that thing. Um, that to scan an entire roll of film will take like a few hours. And I know you can get like the, you can get like the digital like scan stuff sent to you from the, the photo developers if you get it done at like by a developer. But the the resolution that they that they give you is really bad. It's like 72 DPI. I'm like, I can't do anything with this. That's tiny. That's so low res. <laughs> like it is not very useful to me. So so yeah. Um Theo says I've seen older photos of yours. They're beautiful. Oh Theo, thank you so much. That's very kind of you to say. That's very, very kind. Thank you. I used to, I used to have like a Tumblr blog that I would post photos to, um, but I haven't updated it in a really long time because it's just, it's just a faff and I wasn't advertising it anywhere. So I think, I don't think any of it ever really got seen by that many people. So I just decided to not bother because eh, so much work. Um, I do, I will say when Society6 made their changes, uh, if, if you don't know, you may remember Society6 is slash was a website that does like print on demand stuff for like art prints, but you can also get your work printed onto like mugs and shirts and, and other stuff. Um, home decor things like cushions and um, curtains and whatever. Um, but uh, they did. Yeah. Theo says they made some really bad changes recently. They made terrible changes back in like, I think November or December of last year. They were basically like, okay, so we're changing our site to previously, previously it was using the site was free. Um, and then any product that, you know, any product like prints or whatever that they sell would have like, would include the cost of like them printing it and, um, whatever, whatever markup they need to continue running their business. And then you could set a percentage of markup on top of that, which is the money that you make from any print that you sell. So for instance, let's say their base price that covers their costs and, you know, overheads and whatever was like $10. You could set a 20% markup on that. They'd sell it for $12 and you would get $2 from that sale. Um, so the change that they've made is instead of just having that as their situation, it's now, there are different levels of page available that you can have with them. And one of them is, uh, one of them is free and it's terrible. And the others are, you pay for it and you're basically paying money to have the same like shop that you previously had for free. The free one, you can only have 10 items in your shop. Um, so the other ones you have to pay monthly, a monthly fee. You're still earning the same amount of money from whatever sales that you get, but you have to pay a monthly fee to host your stuff on their site. And it's just like, 
if I'm paying a monthly fee to host my stuff on your site, I might as well just print my own things and sell them through my own site. Because, no. <laughs> the whole point of these print-on-demand sites is that there's no overhead costs to you selling your artwork. If they're then like, okay, now you have to pay like 10 pounds a month in order to like use this service. It's not, it's absolutely not worth it. No, 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 no. Um, so I do still have a Society6 page up, but I've, I've, the only things that I've left up there are 10 items uh, and I deleted everything else and they're all photography. So if you ever want to buy any of my photography, there are 10 photographs available and they're all on my Society6 page and that's it. <laughs> Um, that, that's the other thing. I don't, I don't sell like prints that I make of my photographs because I honestly, I don't know where all my negatives are. I don't have a good storage situation for my photos and there are so freaking many of them that like, nah, <laughs> no, no, no. I used to do that back in the day, but nah, I can't do that anymore. Anyways. Uh, can you make two free ones, says Aoife? I suppose I could conceivably because I have more than one email. I could sign up for a second account with another email address, but you know, I kind of don't want to, because as I say, they've just, they started making changes that just made the site worse. And I'm like, eh, you know what? I, I don't, I don't, I don't need this energy in my life. I don't need it. It's fine. Um, and I'm happy to just, to just kind of not with that. I think it's, I think it's better that way. I am, you know what? I'm actually going to switch. I'm going to switch brushes to do the bookshelves at the back here because they are so tittle and so teensy that I think I need the finest brush, the finest brush tip that I have, which is this guy. Just teensy, teensy, tittle, little brushy do. Absolutely teensy. Just so, just so we don't, um... We don't end up in a situation where we're painting over books with what's supposed to be shelf. Because I wouldn't want that. Anyways. The finest brush in all the land, says Aoife. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Yes. That. <laughs> okay. I think I need to go this way for this one. I'm going to paint in the things that are not your little legs, sir. Just the things that are not a little guy's leg. Hopefully. Oh, there's an ankle. Oh no. Okay. All right. Bottom of bookshelf has been established. Hooray. <laughs> at least that, at least that's something. Oh, geez. Okay. Okay. Woo. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, it's so, it's so small. It's so small. It's just like a single line. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, this is genuinely a little terrifying. Because um, the things back here are so little. So little and so small. There we go. Yay! Bookshelf! Um, Aoife says, so my next bookshelf needs to actually go in the room. Because the walls are all taken. I'm thinking of spiraling half the room with shelf. Ooh, spirals. Oh, my friend, that's fancy. Love that for you. Hell yeah. Very, very, very cool. There was, there was, you know, there was a house that I stayed in once in Henley, which if you know the United of Kingdom tells you, I think, some things about it already. Um, I will tell you a little bit more. They had a little placard outside by the, uh, by the driveway that said Jaguar parking only. Um... And their back garden faced directly onto the river behind them. And when I say it faced directly onto the river behind them, I mean that literally the, like, area where they host Henley Regatta was directly across the river from these people's back garden. Anyways, I don't know why I'm mentioning all of that. My point is that um, they had a spiral staircase going up to the um, set like the, the first floor of the house and also the rooftop. Cause they had a rooftop that you could like stand on. It was very cool. Um, but, uh, the spiral staircase, the walls were entirely bookshelves going around the spiral staircase. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh my God. 
Oh my god, I tell you what, like, I don't need a big house, but I would love to have a house with a spiral staircase lined with bookshelves. That was heckin' cool. But as you can tell by all of the other things that I've told you about this house, I'm pretty sure they had a reasonable amount of money, this couple. Um, they were very, they were very sweet. It was a lovely, it was a lovely weekend. Uh, I was there for regatta weekend. And these were uh, parents of my friends at the, of my friend at the time, or no parents in law of my friend at the time, um, who has since divorced. So, I will never see that house again. I'm also not. I don't really keep in touch with that friend anymore. This is going back many, many, many years now. Probably about fifteen years. But uh, anyways, if I become rich, I will build a tower. Says Eva. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. That would be very cool. I just honestly. My, my aspiration is pretty humble. Um, it's just home ownership. I just want a house that is mine, that I feel like I can um, accommodate myself in, in the ways that I feel like would improve my quality of life. From, like, being able to decorate stuff, but also being able to, like, build in certain things like, like furniture types and storage situations that are better suited to the way that, uh, that would allow me to live a little bit more comfortably than I do right now. Because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in a fairly standard flat and to be perfectly honest, a lot of the, um, the way, the way that storage is built into flats here in the UK, I find really unfriendly to the way that like, I would want to be able to store things because if I if I just throw things into a cupboard I, I'm basically consigning them to never be seen or thought of again and that doesn't really work for me so I end up leaving a lot of things out that really probably should have a better place than just in a pile in the living room but I don't really have I don't really have options for for that without um, having a house where I can kind of I can kind of build things in a way that, that feels more friendly to, to me. Anyways. Oh, an evil wizard's tower. Oh, I mean, that I was, I was imagining some kind of, like, fantasy tower. I was very much imagining some kind of fantasy tower. Um, I wasn't necessarily imagining an evil wizard's tower. Oh, oh, Aoife, should I be scared? Because now I'm nervous. <laughs> I think a tower would be nice, but I think I'd prefer, like, a nice wizard's tower. Like, a friendly wizard. But also, actually, no, I take it back, because that is a lot of stairs. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll skip out on the tower. I'll leave the tower for Aoife. I'll do something else. You know, I'll come up with my, I'll come up with my own ideas instead of just stealing Aoife's super cool idea. Sorry, my dude. Um... <laughs> Not yet. I will give ample warning. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Well, um, if you do, if you do ever get your evil wizard's tower, I would love to, I would love to hear all about how you get on with that. That's very cool. Okay. Almost there with the shelves. Almost finished with the bookshelves. What time is it? Oh, beans. <laughs> literally, literally, this is like my fourth stream working on this piece and we have not painted a single book <laughs> ridiculous absolutely ridiculous can you believe can you believe to learn to know because I can't that's so funny okay all right okay all right. Okay. Um, I'm going to paint in this. This is this is so silly as well. I'm going to paint in the sort of the papery bits at the tops of the books because I feel like it wants to be not quite, not quite like a slightly off white. You have painted around the books really, really well, says Theo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, one of those uh, fancy stair chairs. Says, uh, says Aoife, the, the chairlift is an excellent solution for when you can't, when you can't go upstairs on your own. I think it's great that they exist. Um, 
very much I do. I'm using a bit of this yellowish black and I'm just, I'm, I am making a homeopathic color here. This is, this is the only time that I'm, that I, that I, that I dig homeopathy. Um, but I want this to be very, a feather touch of color. Like I don't, I like it's, is anyone going to see that it's visible, but me possibly not. <laughs> Aoife says, I've seen somebody who had all their books wrong in the shelves. Like the pages in the front. Ooh. Mm. Mm-hmm. That, I think, I think, was that like a sad beige mom aesthetic thing? Where like, where are you, do I have a book to hand here where I can illustrate? Um, shoot, my sketchbook's in the other room. Um, but, uh, uh, I literally, there is no, there is not a book within within arm's reach of me okay let's just let's just use this and pretend that well let's pretend that this watercolor block is a book so and this is the book spine and normally it would say something like this is a watercolor block not a book you dummy um but instead of having your books all facing with the spines outwards so you can see what the titles of the books are which is which is what the book spine is good for i have seen this Let's arrange all of our bookshelves so that the pages are, are facing outwards. So it's a nice, clean, sort of one color aesthetic. And now, far be it for me to tell you what to do with your own home decor. But that just seems to suggest that you, you don't, none of these books are for reading. Because you don't need to know which any of them, what any of them are. You know, you, that that's literally just there for sort of the visuals of, ooh, look, it's paper colored. Like, okay. All right. You know, it, like, it's your house. Decorate it the, in a way that makes you happy. I understand. But on the other hand, like, wow, friend. What, what is the point? I don't know. I've seen... I've seen, uh, like, video video content and, and such things on the interwebs of people taking their children, like, their baby, like, their infant baby's colorful toys and repainting them in more, like, mom-friendly shades of beige and taupe and gray. And I just think to myself, you know, at some point you just have to concede that, like, your child's aesthetic might not match yours and that's okay. Um, and specifically, like, ch like, seeing, seeing bright colors and interacting with bright colors is actually good for your child's brain's development. So, why would you, why would you deny them the sight of a color? Especially when they, when they are literally a baby? When they are literally a baby and their world is, like... More or less your home. Let them see, let them see what yellow looks like and red. You don't have to, you don't have to consign them to nothing but, uh, but brown and gray. You know, you, you can buy, you can buy an aesthetically friendly, um, beige and, and gray, like, ball pit for your baby. And I'm just like, why, why would you do this to them? <laughs> why? <laughs> why would you do this to them? Okay, uh, I'm going to pop this to one side for just a moment. Now, it's hard to tell, but I have, in fact, colored in the book spines. And they have that nice sort of antiquarian, slightly, slightly, you know... What what's it what's it called when the 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 wet when the the book when the book pages change color over time because the paper is changing, you know they kind of go a little bit more beige than like pure white. Anyways, I have a terrible drawing time redeem, so let me grab my terrible drawing canvas. Hello, hello, Sammy, and welcome in. How are you doing? Lovely to see you. Welcome in. I'm just fetching the terrible drawing canvas. Had it is. Okay. Anyways, well, I'm I am gonna I am gonna paint some book covers before we're through today. I promise we are. Okay. Okay. Um. I have. 
<laughs> I have a terrible drawing redeemed for a single book called The Joy of Eggplants, or possibly The Joy of Aubergines. I am very happy to, to roll with this. Let's, uh, let's get five minutes up on the clock. Uh, allow me to first explain what the deal is with Terrible Drawing Time for anybody who's new here. Uh, terrible Drawing Time is a phenomenon whereby, for just 5,000 channel points, I've got five minutes or less to draw a character or concept of your choosing from memory or sight unseen uh, on the Terrible Drawing Canvas. This is the one that we're working on right now. Um, I am so sorry for Long Bandicoot. I am so sorry for Long Bandicoot. I, I have no explanation for this. It exists, and I don't love that it does, but here we are. <laughs> Anywho. Um, okay, before I start the timer, Aoife says, I once saw a book on Amazon, Assorted Stories by, I think, Bram Stoker. Somebody wrote something really famous. Mm, I think I've maybe heard of it. And I knew none of their other works. It was impossible to find out what other stories that book features. The description and all the comments are just how great it looks with this fancy leather bindings! I'm sorry! <laughs> That's so friggin' stupid! <coughs> I mean, I do appreciate, like, a good book cover design, but... But y'all! <laughs> Heck! Okay, speaking of some very good book cover design, let me set a timer for five minutes. Oh, Beans, my moderator slash spouse is home, so hold that thought for just a moment, please. Hello, darlings. Just a moment. You okay? Oh, okay. Well, it's available. It's lovely to see you. Welcome home. Did you have a good day? Yeah, good. You want to turn the chat on? Warm up a bit. Okay. I love you. All right, I have greeted my moderator slash spouse. Let's go. Let's do this. All right. Five minutes on the clock. Starting now. Let's go. All right. So it is a single book called The Joy of Eggplants or Aubergines. Let me see what I can do. Okay. So. I'm, I'm popping it down here next to this French-Canadian fishing situation. A reasonably sized cover. I do say so myself. This is, this is a reasonably sized tome, in fact. I think I want us to be able to see to see the nice thick spine. There we go. Is book! Hooray! Is vaguely a book shape. That's a good start. Okay, so. First thing I'm going to do is, ah, uh, I have to remember what an aubergine looks like. Oh no. Oh no. What, what aubergine? Um, okay, so they're kind of like... Kind of like, uh, hold up, hold up. I can do that. I can do this better. I can do this better. I mean, obviously, aubergines come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. We know this. They're all beautiful. But I want to make sure it's for sure rather recognizable in its shape. Okay. So it's like that. And then it's got some little, it's got some little, like, frill, frills at, the, at the, the, the top bit of it, I think. Yes. Yes. They're kind of like, kind of like that. And then it's got a little doop, 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 like so. And I'm going to name this book. The important thing is that they do, I mean, this doesn't look like any, like any one of them's I've ever seen in my life. So I think I'm doing okay.
there's an asterisk here, so let me just put asterisk title. <laughs> okay, I put UK title to Joy of Aubergines. Ta-da! Ta-da! Yay! <laughs> what a wonderful book. <laughs> My book cover design is amazing. You notice I've left enough space here that they can pull, pull like, a quote from a review to put here. Like, it was mid, says Vlidge... Hart Hardinson from The Guardian, or um, I thought this was certainly a book, says Dustin o O'Hanrahan from the uh, New York Review of Books. Um, Aoife's got a question, and I don't know. Aoife wants to know, if any Americans are in the chat can, can field this question, do Americans call the plant an eggplant plant? I, I would like to know this as well, because that's amazing. If, if That is amazing if true. An eggplant plant. Mm. I mean, they must do. One of the books of all time, says Eva. Yes, that's it exactly. It is one of the books of all time. Oh, oh, no, I haven't put... Hang on, I've got to put the, I've got to put the text on down the, the, the side of the thing. There we go. Okay. The I've I've put the text going down the spine so when you look at it on the shelf you can see what book it is. I feel like I feel like this is most certainly a literary triumph. I I hope and and Theo, I I hope you're happy. Here you go. It's terrible drawing time everyone. Um and I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you're happy. That's it. All right. Terrible drawing time was had by all. Yay! Oh, good. All right. Um, not a ton of time left on stream today, but uh, I think we can certainly paint in at least, like, maybe a book. Maybe we can paint in a book. I don't know. Um, one thing that I did not think through is that these books that are all kind of closer, you could conceivably put words on the, on the spines, and I, I hadn't thought far enough ahead to put words on the spines. Lucky Nature Art, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome on in. Hello, hello. I hope you're having a lovely Thursday. It's lovely to see you and welcome. Thank you. Um, right. So I'm going to ignore those for now and I'm going to do the really difficult books right way, way in the back. And partly also because those are the ones that intimidate me the most. Uh, but we can get started with them. So, okay, we've got, we've got, there's definitely like a nature section happening back here because he is definitely reading a book about bird watching, um, and sort of what are some of the local bird species that he might want to be on the lookout for and, and he can, they might spot, spot a bird and then he'll have like an interesting nature fact to say about it because he has just an encyclopedia repository of nature facts this little guy and this one will sit with rapt attention and be like tell me more you know he'll be like did you know that the california quail does this that and the other and 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 this guy will be like you know i didn't know that come on man <laughs> oh they love each other very much it's cute yeah, anyways okay um so i think green i think green is a good color for like some nature guides, but also I want, I want de most definitely most of the, the colors of like the book jackets back here to be quite sort of muted and not too, not too loud so as not to detract, but also it's kind of, it's kind of further away. So I want it to kind of recede a bit apart from these two little guys, these two little guys I want to stand out. So if I make the, the book jackets around them a little bit more subtle, hopefully that should do it fairly well. Um, I'm going to go say hi to my moderator slash boss again for a second because I haven't seen him all day and I miss him.
No, apparently not. Oh, yeah. So, here's the thing that happened. I spent... I spent almost all day waiting for a delivery, because there was supposedly... Supposedly, there was a... Uh, an item that was to be delivered to uh, my house today. Something that, that my moderator slash spouse was expecting. And I waited, and I waited, and I waited, and I waited, and then I got a text from my moderator slash spouse saying that they notified him that they couldn't, that they couldn't deliver the item because the, because the property was inaccessible. And I can tell you that unless there was an accident that completely clo blocked off our road, and I seriously doubt that there was because my moderator slash spouse had no trouble getting home. No, that's absolute bullpucky. So I don't know what they were doing, to be honest. <laughs> uh, it's not like it's not like they rang the doorbell and nobody answered because I was here all day, and I was listening out for the door. I was very careful to make sure that I wasn't that I didn't make too much noise while I was in the kitchen, so that I would hear the doorbell if it went. And there was just nothing. So quite frankly, I'm calling shenanigans. <laughs> This is a series of books, by the way, which is they're from they're from the same set of field guides, which is why they've all got the same color of cover. But we're going to things are going to start getting interesting from here on out. But I'm just going to make some some of these a few more of these little field guides. Um, but yeah, uh, Theo says a lot of delivery people will just claim that if they can't make the deliveries, uh, will just claim that if they can't make the deliveries, they've got scheduled. Yeah, I, I don't I honestly don't know what happened. Um. But, uh, it was, it was certainly a little bit, a little bit frustrating. Um, because as I say, I was, I was waiting all day and nothing happened. Um, I've had it happen before where, like, I would really like to wash my hair. Like, I've, I, you know, today is the day that I wash my hair and then I find out that something's being delivered and I have to wait because I don't want to be in the shower when somebody rocks up. Because I'm not going to be able to hear the doorbell if I'm showering, and then it will it will transpire that like like they'll end up coming to whenever something like that happens. Like there was something that I would like to do as soon as this delivery has arrived. That that will be the time that the delivery arrives, like an hour after the slated delivery time. And I know that that's not necessarily the delivery person's fault by any stretch, but uh, but yeah. Oh, I tell you what, I used to, I used to live in, this is years and years and years ago, but I used to live in like, a, like an apartment building, like a block of flats. Getting things delivered to the house was an absolute nightmare. Um, cause I tell you, I was there most days. Like I was at home most days. I was not, you know, I, w I wasn't working. And when I did, when I was working at that point, I wasn't working every day. So I was at home a lot. And the number of times I would go down to, like, the little, like, the the area where all our little post boxes were, and I would look and see, and I'd have, like, a something for you card, and I'd have to go down to, like, the depot someplace, which was scary and difficult to get to if you didn't have a car, um, because they would just, I don't know, like, 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 posties would just rock up, get confused, not not know what to do with my parcel and just fill out a card rather than like trying to buzz my flat number, which was really annoying. Um, uh, Aoife says, I, I've asked about the eggplant in two chats now. Apparently Americans have never thought about this. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, I'm not surprised that it doesn't, it's not something that comes up a lot in people's trains of thought, but, uh, it, it, my, like, my curiosity has been piqued, personally. I would like to know. Is it an eggplant plant, if you call it an eggplant? And I honestly have not the foggiest. Because, I mean, certainly in this country we call it an aubergine. As you can tell by my accent, I'm from the United Kingdom. I honestly don't know. <laughs> I don't know what my accent reads like these days. Um... I'm from Canada. 
if you're asking where am I from from, by the way, in case anyone's curious. And you might be, I don't know. But, um... But, yeah. Eggplant plant. I mean, why not? I don't know. Anyways. Um... This is one of the things that always really kind of throws me when I'm creating a piece of art, is having to, like, manufacture the appearance of randomness is actually really difficult to, to create something that looks random by deliberately placing things. Because obviously, you know, sort of a, a randomized set of books or what have you could be, this could be random, you know, but it's not. I mean, these probably aren't fully, fully random. They'll, they'll have been arranged in some, in some way that we don't quite understand. But, um, is that enough green books? I feel like that's enough green books for this section. So I will stop, I will stop with the green books and I'll add some, maybe some blue books or some red books or some brown, but maybe some brown books. Ooh, you know what we don't have enough of in this <laughs> In this painting yet, it's brown. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is taking so long. Sweetheart, have you seen where we're at on this painting? <laughs> There's still some more to get done. So I guess we're doing this again next stream. Oh my goodness gracious. Listen, if we can fin if we can get the books done in the next two streams, I will be over the moon. And I honestly think that we maybe can. Um, I, I want to believe, okay, I'm going to maybe do some red books. This reddish black color is so pretty. So I think we can, I think we can do some, some nice red books with it. There we go. Okie dokie. All right. Um. <laughs> Aoife says, I asked my four-year-old nephew um, <laughs> if there were going to be chickens come out of those. What? Eggplants? <laughs> Heck. <laughs> I'm going to sip my tea again. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get some red books down on these, these back shelves. Maybe this big boy is red. This, um... This set of colors, I absolutely adore these colors. I think they're so nice. The um, the shadow black set of, of Gansai paints um, that I got from a, a stationery shop in London. So good. So nice. So nice. I love that the... <laughs> I love that the box refers to them as Japanesque color because it's a, it's a Japanese paint set. Japanesque color. Amazing. I've never heard that phrase before, and I've never heard that phrase since. <laughs> Anyways, uh, he said, he said, no, Aunt Eva, those are normal eggs. Like those from the fridge, not chicken eggs. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Someone's got some learning to do about where eggs come from, and it's not just the supermarket. Aww. Bless ems. Anywho. Right. Bring some red books in here. Okay. Maybe that one. Sorry, my randomization is very not random, but whatever. You know what? Once it's all done, it'll it'll read perfectly fine, I think. So I'm not mega concerned about it. One there, one here. One little guy who's still looking very not painted in. It's very, it is very hard to make stuff random. It really is. Like when I've done things like, um, like, 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 you know, gardens and like natural spaces as well. Cause you want, you want a balance between it feels like a, like a natural space, but you also, because you're painting it, you want it to be aesthetically pleasing and to try and like balance those two things is, oh, my brain. 
<laughs> my brain doesn't know what to do. It is genuinely very, very difficult to to do that. Um, but yeah. So yeah, trying to trying to manufacture the illusion of randomness is a real it it really it does my brain in and I do I I seem to do a lot of things where I need to do it. Cause like randomly, you know, like if it's like a field of wildflowers, randomly there might just be like a cluster of just nothing but yellow flowers over here. But will that look good in the composition, you know, trying to balance like it feels like like a random assemblage of wildflowers, but on the other hand, you you also are aware of the fact that this is a painting, and paintings have things like composition and balance to consider. What is going to be visually appealing to a viewer, and to 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 balance those is it's just whew. it's fun. It's very fun. Um, but it is one of the, one of the harder things I find kind of to do sometimes, which is, which is wild. Like randomly, these two books next to each other are more or less the same color. Because randomly that can happen. Like, why not? But maybe they're two copies of the same book, actually. Like, they could be. This is a bookshop. They might have ended up with two copies of the same book. Why not? But... Let me fill in some of the books in the vicinity of this little guy. Maybe this one is red. I'm also trying to be mindful here now of this guy, of putting putting colors next to him that aren't going to compete too horribly with, like, his outfit. And same with the other guy. Well, this guy I think is going to be wearing mostly, like, gray, so that shouldn't be a problem. But this guy's going to be... this guy. This guy wants to dress in, like, browns and greens kind of thing, so trying to be mindful of that is... Um, is interesting. So I might I might end up surrounding him with a couple of sort of bluer bluer book covers for that very reason. Um, I think that I think I'm gonna leave the red ones at that for now because I'm gonna want some blue ones in there, some brown ones in there, and that's probably gonna be about it for those book covers. Maybe a couple of little outliers in like yellow or orange or something like that. Um, but for the most part, I want these ones to be fairly sort of darker and more subtle because they're because um, I want them to kind of. I want these two guys to really pop in front of that. Oh, shoot. I should probably figure out what the flip I'm doing with the floor as well. But I think that might be a question for next stream me because um, I've just seen the time and it is time to call it a day. Let me just check check in with chat one more time. Aoife says, I painted a huge painting for my sister. Ooh, I made it look like a puzzle. Um, and actually threw dice to determine how the puzzle pieces would look, like, like nub or nub hole, big, mid, or small size nubs, more to the left or right, etc., etc. That is very cool and a very fun way to randomize things as well. Um, when I bought, when I bought this, this, I say set of paints, it's not really a set of paints because I just bought like, like five pans of paint from this set. Um, I kind of tried to randomize it. But I also knew I wanted a fairly, like, representative set of colors that I could do different types of painting with. So it was, like, it ended up being sort of, like, semi-randomized. Um, but uh, but what I, what I did to do that was I ended up just figuring out how many different colors of paint they sold and then just rolling a dice of that number of, um, of that number and just kind of discarding colors that didn't work for me until I ended up with a set that I thought worked really well. Um, so we're going to paint with these at some point, but I wanted, they're, they're very, these paints are very granular and are kind of composed with two different pigments that will kind of give color shifts and that kind of thing. And I felt for something that is this detailed, I wanted to be a little bit more precise in my, where my colors are sitting. So, um, so we'll do these for another project very soon, I hope. I don't know what yet, but um, I think it'll be a lot of fun uh, to work with those. 
But um, but yeah, when I bought those, I I didn't I knew I wasn't gonna be able to afford more than like a couple of paint pans because they're quite expensive for like one little paint. It was like six pounds something. So when you think about it, if you're getting like a set of twelve or whatever, normally that adds up super fast. Compare and contrast that with like this set was like twenty pounds. These were like 20 pounds, I think. Um, and then getting 12 of those ones would end up being like 72 pounds at least. At least 72. A random number generator, yeah. Um, at least 72 pounds, which is a lot of money for this little bean. <laughs> I don't have that kind of money to throw around at art supplies, so... Um... So I decided to just get five and was like, you know what, that's that's as much as I can afford. Um, so I wanted it to be a fairly representative set of colors. But I did try and, like, randomize it um, as best as I could to try and get an interesting range of thingies. Anywho. Enough about that. Um, I'm going to see... I'm going to see if there's anyone we can do a little raid on. I just realized I don't think I did a proper BRB this stream. Because, um... Because the stream died, and then I just completely lost track of time. So, wow, I've had a lot of fluids, and I should probably visit the loop. <laughs> the stream is done, oh no! I wish you had a very rich benefactor, says Theo. Me too, kind of, except I feel like it would affect... I feel like it would affect, like, my artistic output, because I would feel... I would feel like I have to, like, I have to do things that, that I know that they would like. Um, and... And I feel like I would I would be subconsciously at least tailoring tailoring my art towards that probably. Uh, anyways, uh, let's do a little raidy raid. Let me see who is online. Anyways, oh heck, oh heck, there's a hello in chat. I'm literally about to oh my friend, I'm so sorry. I'm literally about to leave, but also hi. That would not be the right kind of rich benefactor. You need the rich benefactor who's extremely hands off. Like they don't communicate with you. You just receive money. Uh, that'd be amazing. Um, I wish you had enough money to spend more on art. On I have more than enough art supplies at home. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to run out of paint for a very long time, Theo. I'm okay on that on that part. Um, it's the everything else. I would love a rich benefactor that would let me also pay the bills. Um, but never mind. Anywho. Uh, I'm going to see who is online. See if we can do a raid. Anyways. Um, hope you all had a nice day. I hope you all have a good rest of your day. Um, and, uh, I don't know how, how long, sh uh, they, they're going to go on for, but I haven't had a chance to raid a Kirsty in a little while. So I'm going to raid Kirsty because Kirsty's fun. Um, I'm going to pop a generic raid message in the chat because generic raid messages are fun. I'm going to add some emotes to the generic raid message. Why not? Anana? Anana just sliding on in to say hello. <laughs> Feels appropriate. Um, I'm going to thank y'all for hanging out with me today. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, you're all breathtaking. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow morning playing some Hollow Knight. And, um, yeah, I hope to see y'all again soon. I hope you have a good evening. I hope whatever you get up to for the rest of the day, um, is good. And, uh, yeah, I shall see you again, hopefully very, very soon. You're all breathtaking. Take care, everyone. And have, have yourselves a good one. And, uh, goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, goodbye.